Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whichever time you are uh, watching this. First, I would like to welcome everyone to this Bible study, not only my students in C1 and C2, but uh, to all friends and relations, to my other subscribers, welcome. You are uh, encouraged to uh, share your reflection also after this one in the comment section below and you're also welcome to share it to your friends whom you think uh, they can benefit from this um, before we start we observe uh, this picture this is supposed to be the picture of the original paradise this is uh, god's huge project of creation so you will find there the um the result of the six days of creation the uh, chaos is now ordered so everybody or everything has its own place so the water is separated from the land so you can see from the picture you um you have also the birds um all the animals in all types of vegetation and of course the man and the woman sitting with the lion so that is the uh, original picture of paradise which other people call it paradise lost and we will see later why it is called paradise lost or the lost paradise so the big topic today is on temptation and sin how it in entered in um, the lives of people but before we uh, we start reading uh, Genesis chapter uh, 3, 1 to 24, um, we will start with our um, objective. So obviously, as I mentioned, this is uh, the topic on temptation and sin. So we're going to reread and reflect on the narrative of temptation and sin as recorded and narrated in the third chapter of Genesis verses 1 to 24 and we reflect on the consequences of sin and hope that we can learn something from this narrative uh, we um, go back to this conversation on what is temptation how does temptation becomes a sin and third is to glean on the ethical and moral principles embedded on the narrative so to my students in CE2, I require you also to watch this, not only uh, those who are enrolled in CE1, because when we start um, rereading the Decalogue, the Ten Commandments, and starting and start to discuss all the um, each of the commandments, uh, you need to, or we need to go back to chapter three. So why not start it now? So. Um, I expect that you also share reflection and comments in the, um, after this um, Bible study. Number four is, of course, to affirm God as the creator, provider, or sustainer, and judge for humanity and for the world. So before we read the, the whole of, the, almost the whole chapter of um, Genesis chapter 3, let us go back to that instruction. This is very important so that we'll have a good understanding of what is going on in chapter 3. We need to go back to this particular verse. So this is Genesis chapter 2 verses 15 through 17. And let us read. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it and keep it. So that is the first responsibility of uh, the man to work the garden and to take care of it. And the Lord God commanded a man, saying, You may surely eat of every tree of the garden, but on the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. So that is very clear instruction from God to the man. So Eve was not pre present there. So it's the man who received the instruction. Now let us... Um, read the whole chapter of um, Genesis chapter 3. Uh, join me and observe those um, words that I underline. Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord had made. He said to the woman, Did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? 
The woman said to the serpent, We may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say, You must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it, or you will die. You will not certainly die, the serpent said to the woman, for God knows that when you eat from, from it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing what is good and evil. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye, and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate, and ate it. She also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and realized they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden and the cold of the day. And he hid from, from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, so I hid. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? The man said, The woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree, and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, Cursed are you above all livestock and all wild animals. You will crawl on your belly, and you will eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put you in, and I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head, and you will strike his heel. To the woman, he said, "He said, sorry, I will make your pains and childbearing very severe." With painful labor, you will give birth to children. Your desire will be for your husband, and he will roll over you. To Adam, he said, Because you listened to your wife and eat from the tree about which I commanded you, you must not eat from it. Curse is the ground because of you. Through painful toil, you will eat food from it all the days of your life. It will produce thorns and thistles for you and you will eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your brow, you will eat your food, until you return to the ground, since from it you were taken, for dust you are, into dust you shall return. Adam named his wife Eve, because she would become the mother of all living. Adam named his wife Eve because she would become the mother of the living. The Lord God made garments of skin for Adam and his wife, and clothed them. And the Lord God said, The man has now become like one of us, knowing good and evil. He must not be allowed to reach out his hand and take from the tree of life and eat and live forever. Verse 23. So the Lord God banished him from the garden of Eden to work the ground from which he has been taken. After he drove the man out, he placed on the east side of the garden of Eden cherubim in a flaming sword flashing back and forth to guard the way to the tree of life. So that is the narrative in chapter 3. So the uh, conclusion here is, after reading chapter 3, the reflection there would be, okay, humanity, what happened to, to him? For Genesis chapter 1 and 2, we... When you read the, the narratives and the two chapters, the man is the in charge, the overall steward of the uh, the rest of God's creation. He is the caretaker. Uh, he's the, um, he has this bond with God. He has that um, good relationship with God because he is the image of God. But what happened in chapter 3, Kaagad Agad, the Bible is now telling us in the book of Genesis 
that this image of God slowly is now a sinner or now became disobedient to his Lord. But this is the um, suggestions of the biblical scholars that kahit anong nangyari dun sa chapter 3, ito pa rin yun, that humanity is still complete, but the good and holy being was spoiled. So parang yun yung conclusion ng the whole chapter. Um, we continue. Uh, so that we will understand better what's going on there. The first, the second slide that I presented a while back is the exact trans, uh, instruction of God given to the man that the man should eat from any of the trees in the garden except for the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Because if the man will pick and eat from the tree, that moment he will surely die. So in the Garden of Eden, aside from the tree, there are two trees there that are very important. So is it an apple tree? Is it a lemon tree? Or is it a um, orange tree? Mango tree? But the trees, interestingly, may pangalan yan. So dalawa yan, dalawa yan ha, di lang isa. So you have two trees in the garden as mentioned in chapter 3. So you have there first the tree of life which is others would call it tree of immortality. And of course, hindi nga doon kumain si, uh, si Adam and Eve. So we are not immortals. Uh, saan sila kumain? Doon sa the tree of knowledge of good and evil, which is the tree of wisdom and intelligence. So hindi sila immortal, but they have now supposedly a good understanding of what is um, good and evil so there are two trees there uh see one and two memorize that because i will ask that in your exam okay so we observe again um pictures this one this first picture is of course that's the illustration of the artists so you have there the tree Oo nga naman, parang apple kasi yung presentation kaya others would debate that it's an apple tree it looks like an apple but maybe not an apple Okay, so you find there the snake. Um, if you observe, it's uh, if um, uh, getting the fruit from the snake. So it's not directly from the tree, but it's from the snake. And of course, you have there the man with just, uh, wala siyang kibo, no? Uh, wala lang, wala siyang imik. And of course, according to the narrative, kumain din siya. Um... Ayan. Uh, this time, uh, look at the reaction of the of the man. So, wala siyang kibo. Take note, doon sa instruction, siya lang naman yung nakareceive ng instruction. Kasi meron tayong mga preachers, hindi naman lahat ng preachers, no? hindi lahat ng pari o pastor, but I still hear sermons during weddings or uh, in some jokes. Sabi nila, tayo daw mga babae, tayo yung tukso. Okay? San ba galing yun? So, they always cite this particular chapter in the book of Genesis. When Eve picked the fruit, after eating some, he give, uh, she gave some to Adam and Adam or the man. Eat also the fruit. So, uh, let us deconstruct yung mga ganyang jokes. Because in here, if you look at, so I like this uh, illustration. Ano lang siya? Gumanon lang yung, napakamot lang yung man. Pero dapat sinabi niya, kasi in the first place, siya naman yung pinagbigyan ng instruction. Dapat sabi niya, hala, sabi ni God, hindi natin yan kakainin, bakit ako makain dyan? Ayoko nga, ikaw lang mag-isa mo. But no, kinain din niya. So parang sunod-sunuran. So hindi ko naman sinasabi, lahat na lalaki, sunod-sunuran sa babae. But look at the picture. My point there is, um, both the man and the woman naniwala doon sa sinabi ng snake that they will not surely die. O sabi ni God, if you eat from the tree, you will die. Pero sige pa rin sila, kumain sila. So, ano na yung nangyari? Okay, we come to the third picture. 
So this one is of course after they realize, so kinain na yun, yung fruit na yun, they realize that both of them were naked. So sabi ng ibang uh, scholar, what really happened? So after eating that fruit, meron na silang realization. Kaya, ayan, na-realize nila that they were both naked. So before, siguro nagtagtinginan, wala lang. So, um, they were both innocent, sabi ng iba. Pero this time, uh, nakita na nila that they were both naked. And they need some covering to hide their nakedness. And so they sued fig leaves, according to the narrative, to cover themselves. But of course, later on, God would change that into an animal skin. So it's a, it's a better kind of material. So from the leaves to an animal skin. Now the next picture, if you are a keen observer, if you are a keen observer, uh, very good observant kayo. When you enter, when you enter cathedrals and museums or churches, uh, usually may mga stained glasses, may mga drawings doon sa um, glasses and you will find this one, uh, mostly in big cathedrals. And of course, you will be reminded of this narrative of um, uh, temptation and sin in uh, Genesis chapter 3. Now, we talk about the consequences. So, God gave them instruction not to do a particular thing, not to eat from the tree. But somehow, they listened to the snake. And, ayun na nga, kumain sila. So, there is a consequence for their for their action. And, yun nga, meron silang individual. Each of them, the woman, the snake, and the man, received the... Uh, Curses, okay? Ang nakalagay is curses or uh, the equivalent of their uh, disobedience. So for the woman, it is the birth pangs. In pain, you shall bring forth children. So ayun, uh, that would explain why um, when a woman gives birth, she would experience what we call the birth pangs. And to the snake, of course, um, he lost his legs. Upon your belly, you shall go and eat dust all the day, all the days of your life. So, bago yon, the snake, ano ang chura ng snake? Siguro uh, the snake would be standing, meron siyang paa. But because yun yung ginawa niya, ayan, nawalan siya ng paa, and he has to crawl and eat dust. Uh, of course, uh, when you observe snake, they are not actually eating um, dust. They are eating plants. And um, so the biblical scholars would suggest that that is the dust is a metaphor for uh, a porous kind of existence. Okay. And of course, the man, ano naman ang nangyari? Take note, class. The man is not cursed. But what is being cursed? Curse is the ground because of you. So, dahil sa yo, the ground is cursed. So, why? Again, biblical scholars would argue that man is the image of God. And God wouldn't curse his image. So it's not the man that's being cursed, but it is the ground. So ito na slowly yung paradise. Anong nangyari na? So curse is the ground because of you. By the sweat of your face, you shall eat bread. Curse is upon the ground, not the man. Because man's disobedience, because of man's disobedience, Ayan na, nagkaroon na ng, na-introduce na yung suffering and death. So, kailangan paglingutan na amin nga kanin na. He has to plant. Before, uh, they will just be gathering food from the garden. But this time, they should plant. Yung expression natin sa Filipino, kailangan na, siyang, kailangan na nilang magbanat ng buto before they will eat. That would explain why you are educating yourselves. Why do you need to work? Because you cannot eat if you will just sit down. Because yun nga, that is the explanation. And of course, the introduction of death. So part of that curse, sabi ni God, sa man, from this time for you will return to the ground, for from the ground you were, you were taken. So sa As Wednesday, ito yung sinasabi ng priests, before they will impose ashes on our forehead, sabi ng padi, man, remember that you are dust and from dust 
you shall return. So galing po yan dun sa uh, chapter 3. So suffering and death is an inevitable fate that you ma that hounds man throughout his life. So you will find this particular uh, verse in Psalm 90, verse 10. This is one of my favorite uh, Psalm, Psalm 90, aside from, of course, Psalm 23. Uh, verse 10 of Psalm 90 would tell us, or the psalmist has this reflection. The span of our life is 70 years, perhaps in strength even 80. Yet the sum of them is but labor and sorrow, for they pass away quickly and we are gone. Okay, so when you read uh, Genesis, you continue to read Genesis chapter 4, it would tell us that men during that time, mga tao, nagkakaedit more than 500, 600, 700. Si Mitosila is actually more than, um, I think he's 960 years old before siya namatay. Pero namatay pa rin. So people, is no long, they are no longer immortal. Um, but now we are all mortals. At sabi doon sa Psalm 90, hindi na kaya ng tao na mabuhay hanggang doon 200, 300. Ayan na yung sinabi niya. Biblical age is... Uh, the span of our life is 70 years, perhaps in strength even 80. Yet the sum of them is but labor and sorrow, for they pass away quickly and we are gone. So, iyan na yung reflection ng psalmist. Na even if we live even beyond 80, but the sum of our life is but labor and sorrow. Uh, as you grow older, you grow in wisdom, you will have a better understanding of that verse. Ngayon pa lang, siguro meron pa sa inyo hindi nakaka-relate kung anong ibig sabihin yan. But now that you are starting to sweat it out, that you must study and uh, you have to have uh, education so that you can work and then uh, kala mo excited ka na, natapos ka ng studies mo. But it will begin when after uh, your studies you are going to look for work. That yung kalbaryo natin magsisimula. But of course, I pray na when you when you are done with your bachelor's degree, you will be able to find work right away. Pero kadalasan kasi hindi marami. Akala mo tapos ka na, masaya ka na. There are a lot of challenges. There are a lot of struggles pa rin. There are a lot of things to... Uh, eh, kaya nga sa ang tawag dyan is suffering. Diba? Marami ka pa rin pagdadaanan sa buhay mo. But of course, hindi naman purely suffering. And of course, there are moments when we grieve. Uh, sorrow is part of life. So, yun yung sinabi ng psalmist. So, in verse 12, ito yung kanyang, um, at the end, sabi ng psalmist, So, teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Kaya yan. So, kung ganito siya, uh, that life is now shorter than originally it was, then we should be more um, careful. And, of course, live our life to the fullest. Kasi hindi nga yan aabot ng 100 or more than 100. Okay, we're moving on. We um, talk about what are the consequences of sin as narrated in chapter 3. So first is of course nung kinain nila, they realized they were naked. Ayan, lahat lumabas na yan. Yung um, all these type of emotions. Okay, so kinain nila, nalaman nga nila yung totoo yung they will um, know what is evil and what is good. No? So they realize. And after realization of that nakedness, after that comes guilt. So nang hinahanap ni Lord, nasaan ka? Where are you? Diba? Nag-reason out na kagad. Andito ko, nagtatago ako. Nahihiya ako. Because I am naked. So who told you you were naked? So, meron siyang hiya, shame, na may kasamang guilt, at may kasamang takot. And of course, nakita natin yung passing of the blame. Ito kasing babaeng binigay mo. At first, sabi niya sa chapter 2, if you go back and read, ang saya-saya niya. Anong sabi ni man kay woman? This at last is flesh of my flesh, bone of my bones. Ito ang talagang para sa akin. Thank you. Diba? Labis-labis ang pasasalamat niya kay, um, kay God nung binigay sa kanya yung babae. All this time, biniblame na niya si God. Ito, binibigay mo pa kasi ito. Binigay mo pa. Ay, ito ang may kasalanan. 
And of course, the woman, at least, meron pa siyang i-blame, not accepting the um, consequences. Pero sa akin, itong si snake, it's the snake trick me. And yun na. Of course, sa so snake, wala naman siyang i-blame. So, pero yan, um, this, uh, in chapter 3, marami tayo mga tututunan dyan eh, na talagang nangyayari sa buhay natin. That when we commit something, when we have mistakes, we have faults, kagad-agad ang reaction natin kung meron tayong ginawa is, it's very clear that we admit right away our mistakes. So, we always look for somebody to blame or some other things to blame. So, that is explained in this chapter. But what is really the consequence? What are the consequences when we commit mistakes? When we sin? Later, we discuss paano, paano yun? Babalikan pa rin natin yung narrative. So, I summarize it into four. Okay? So, for every mistake, kung wala man yung apat na yan, at least there is one from that four element there that we that we experience. Kung hindi man guilt, hiya, nahihiya, or natatakot tayo. And of course, we blame others uh, for our mistakes. So that is uh, explained to us by chapter 3. Now what is the result? So when they receive the corresponding punishment for their individual action, they were finally evicted from the Garden of Eden. So they were banished from the garden and not only from the garden. Later on, we'll see that they, also, they were also banished from God's presence. So at least, um, dito natin ma-affirm that God is the creator, but he's still the sustainer and provider because before they were evicted to the garden, at least God changed yung fig leaves into a better um, type of material. Pinalitan niya yung damit nila. Yeah, animal skin. And of course, hindi naman sila basta pinatay or what. They are going to the ground that is cursed that you're going to work uh, on that ground. Moving on. So, ito yung sinasuggest ng maraming biblical scholars. So, they were evicted from the garden but they were also evicted from God's presence. And of course, they have to live a righteous life. It tayo na ito, more of yung i ibig sabihin ng righteous living. Uh, when we reflect to what really happened to our first parents, then so what are we going to do to at least uh, make this life livable? Kahit ganyan pala kung bakit nagkaroon tayo ng kahirapan at bakit pumasok yung kamatayan. So they're suggesting that when we read this chapter, we are now um, going to retrieve what we mean by righteous living or why is that we're expected to live um, in a certain way if we say we are Christians or we are religious persons so what expected of us okay so death is the consequence of humanity's rebellion against God however the most significant consequence was loss of access to the divine presence the moment described in Genesis chapter 3 verse 8 echoes throughout the rest of the universal history as they heard the Lord God walking in the garden, the man and his wife hid themselves from the divine presence. So sila ang nagtago. So minsan, minsan yun nga, eh, parang nagtatago tayo dahil alam natin meron tayong mali. So we are hiding ourselves from others and of course from God. And we hope that God didn't see yung ating mga kamalian. But of course sabi natin, we, uh, we hid nothing from God. That's the meaning of nakedness. Wala na tayong metatagod. God knows us through and through. Okay, Ken goes forth from the presence of the Lord. So, um, ito pa yung isang chapter sa Genesis. That is, we talk about that later. The first murder, dyan sa chapter 4. So, nung minurder ni Cain si Abel, yung kanyang younger brother. And of course, after that comes fear and guilt. And so, he walk away. So, from the presence of the Lord, diba? And Noah is also described as a man who walked with God. Ito naman yung opposite. So, here's, there are men who walk away from the presence of God. And that is the the, man, the first man and woman. And of course, si, si Cain. But here's a man that is described as a person or as a man who walked with God. 
So, and that is Noah. And we'll talk about Noah later. So, despite the reign of death, divine presence remains the critical reality for the world. So, ngayon meron itong nagbibigay sa atin ng pag-asa na kahit anong nangyayari, there's suffering, there is death. But for as long as we walk with God, makakayanan natin. Uh, kaya yan yung basis ng mga Kristiyano or mga people who, other people who say na may pag-asa pa. So, at the end of the storm, there is light. Because we go back to that, while chapter 3 speaks of um, humanity falling to sin. But at least, there's always that good news there. So, kung ano itong nangyari, ano pwedeng mangyari? Okay? So, we are always uh, looking at the where is that good news. Okay, now we come now to define. So, reading chapter 3, ano talaga ang temptation? Ano ang tukso? At ano ang kasalanan? So, when does uh, temptation becomes sin? Okay, so temptation begin begins in the mind through the insinuation of doubt. So, in some translation, ang description nila sa snake is the tempter. Because it's the snake who insinuated uh, siya yung nagsabi, did God really say you will not eat from the tree? Yes, sabi ni Abe, kasi kung hahawakan at kakainin namin yun, we will die. Anong sinabi ng snake? You will not surely die. Sinabi lang niya yun, kasi kung kakainin nyo yun, magiging katulad nyo siya, knowing what is good in evil. So, no sinabi ng snake, titignan ni Eve yung, yung fruit, sabi niya, oo nga, no? Ang ganda, para ang sarap kainin. So, from the mind, from the insinuation of the doubt, from insinuation or creating that doubt, insinuation of doubt in the mind, in the brain, ay yung mata, di ba? So, it's the eyes now, focusing on that object. Don sa fruit. And from the eyes, anong sumunod? Eve stretched out her hand and took that fruit. Kinain na niya. So that moment na kinuha niya at kinain na niya, binigay pa niya kay man, binigyan pa niya si husband niya, ayun na. That's the consummation of that. It becomes sin. So, saan nagsisimula ang kasalanan, sabi nga nila, actually sa utak. It's here in the mind. And that is illustrated again doon sa chapter 3. When the snake, yun, yun ginamit niya yung will, yung reasoning, di ba? He will not die, actually, ganito. Ayaw niya kasi ganito mangyayari sa inyo, magiging katulad niyo siya. So, it doubt yung doubt, the moment. And then, of course, doon sa mata. Kaya nga sa time ni Jesus, sabi niya, if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. Because after the mind, yan, titignan mo, tinignan niya, wow, ang sarap talaga. And then that desire is created in Eve. So it's desirable of for gaining wisdom. So from the mind to the eyes, and then you will have that desire, and then you will act it out. So it's not just in the mind and in the eyes, in sa emotion, pero ginawa mo pa. Ginawa pa niya, talagang kinuha niya at kinain niya. Okay. So, that is why the snake is described as the uncanny wisdom. So, what is really the snake? So, ayan yung explanation ng mga biblical scholar. The snake is described as uncanny wisdom, the seductive power in man's environment hostile to God. Kaya niya ang tinatawag natin sa Pilipino na tukso. Oh, tukso, layuan mo ako. Kahit sinasabi natin yun, kung hindi tayo lumalayo, and we concentrate, by using our eyes, and then yan yung imagination, the desire, at pag ginawa mo na, that becomes a sin. So, I hope we have better understanding of what is temptation and what is sin. So, nakikita mo yung isang bagay. Minsan sabi ng iba, hindi ah, sa mata muna kasi nakikita mo eh. And then, napapaisip ka. And then, you have that strong desire to take that thing. Ninakaw muna, kinuha muna. So, ano ang pagnanakaw? 
when we go to the Ten Commandments, kaya ang sabi ko, you need to read chapter 3 to have a better understanding why binigay yung uh, Ten Commandments. Because that would um, direct us of not committing the same mistake. Okay? Because now we know that it's there, it starts in the mind. Pero sabi ng sa mata daw. Whichever, but actually, hindi ka agad-agad sa kamay. Okay? So, it would start in your in your eyes, kung ano man yung paniwala nyo. Sa utak, and of course, it would create desire. And then, yun na yun. Okay, we... What is sin? Here are some words to understand as kung anong talaga yung palagi nating sinasabing sin or kasalanan. Uh, merong mga Hebrew uh, words that would help us understand. So first is, we have this Hebrew word, pisha, uh, meaning in English is to trespass, or a sin done out of rebelliousness. So yun yung uh, kind of sin. Uh, sabi ng iba kasi, ibang writer is, yung title is, Man Rebelled Against God. So rebelliousness yun. Um, sinabi niya, ganito yung instruction, pero hindi mo sinunod, parang nag ka, um, ayan, so that is pisha. So, that describes yung lahat tayo guilty dyan. Sina, sinasabi ng ating mga elders, ang ating mga teachers, ating mga pastors, do not do this, do not do that, but we do the other, we go the other way. Okay, so we have another word that is severia, and that is transgression, that is the uh, direct uh, translation in English. And that's verb, um, and there's a Related dyan yung verb na hata, meaning to go astray or to go in the wrong direction. Um, kaya meron tayong expression na I hope that you will go to the right direction. Katotoo pala yun kasi may wrong direction. And that is hata, which is related to averia. And see, we have rehata, meaning to miss the mark or mistake. Ito yung palaging um, ginagamit natin na meaning ng sin is to miss the mark, to miss the point. And of course, Russia, that is the last one. And it means lost from the path. So that is related to Aviria or Hata when we speak of direction. Moving on. So seen in Hebrew cultural context, Hebrews are nomadic people and their language and lifestyle is wrapped around this culture. One aspect of nomadic life is a constant journey from one hole to another in one pasture to another. Walking on the journey and find yourself lost from the path, Rasha, you correct yourself and get back to the right path because this was a mistake or is an accidentally missing the mark. So ito yung parang nawala ka sa landas. Pero we are not speaking figuratively. Literally, you mean son, we were asked to go somewhere and you are lost. And then at the middle of the way, you recognize that maybe I'm lost. This is not, I think, the right way. So you go back. Okay. So, you go back to find the right direction so that you will reach your destination, your correct destination. Pero, sabi nila, talagang ano naman yun, kung nare-realize mo ng mali at punta ka pa rin ng punta dun, that is another thing. So, but not deliberate. Once you are back on the right path, all is good. Yun nga, pag nakita mo na yung totoong daan, and of course, you follow that right way, you will find your um, correct destination. Okay, however, if you decide to leave the path, make your own, you are again lost from the path. But this time, being deliberate act, it is a forceful mistake, missing the mark on purpose. Yun nga yung sinabi natin kanina. Of course, others would argue. Kasi merong yung sasabi, but you have to think outside the box. Well, we're not talking about that. That's another, uh, another context. Uh, we're talking here of the direction, ang goal is, so that you will be directed to the right path. And you will not go the wrong way. Because when you go to the wrong way, yun nga, doon na yun, you will experience everything. Ito yung frustration. Um, ayun na, too late na nung na-realize mo that this is a mistake. Okay? In the Old Testament Bible, God gives directions, usually translated as commands. Yun. So, the Ten Commandments and all the other commands in the Old Testament in, that, in the time of Jesus is yan, is to... Um, direct us to the right direction or to the right path, right way. As long as they remain on that journey, they are shadi, usually translated as righteous. So why we follow this command? Because we want to have, want to live a righteous living or a righteous life. Okay, what is sin? 
uh, I got this usually from theopedia.com. Uh, theopedia.com. You can always uh, check. In Hebrew line of thought, sin is evil, transgression, wickedness, iniquity, offense, quarrel, revolt, rebellion, trespassing, to go astray or guilt. Interesting ni kasama yung guilt. Deception, perversion of being crooked or twisted, and of being ignorant. So, sabi nila, ignorance excuses no one. Uh, minsan yung nakikita natin sa may mga nagpo-post na mga racist comments and all that. Uh, why these people are doing this because of ignorance yun nga. we become so judgmental of others because of our ignorance so kasalanan yung pagkaignorante kung hindi ka sure wag ka na lang magsalita para hindi ka magkasala so yeah okay in greek it means to miss the mark evil and righteousness lawlessness transgression offense badness wickedness and godliness violation of being contrary and of course immorality Ayan, kaya bakit kasalanan yung immorality? Because in the Greek expression, yun yung meaning ng sin. Okay, there are two types of sin. Medyo malapit na tayo. Mga five minutes na lang. Okay, there are two types of sin when we speak of the Bible. Especially when you read the parables of Jesus. So, we have what we call sin of omission and sin of commission. Commission, maintindihan man, because those are the sins that you, those are the actions that you committed that you should not commit. But what is sin of omission? Uh, this is the failure to perform an obligatory act. And the perfect example of that is the parable of the rich man and Lazarus. You read that, Luke chapter 16, 19 to 30. So the story there is, the rich man did not, diba, the narrative there says that there was a rich man who is, uh, fisting, uh, always wearing nice clothing, paraging my party, paraging my feet sa bahay niya. Ito naman si Lazarus is uh, buong katawan niya. So meron siya skin disease and he's poor really. And pinupunta doon sa gate ng mayaman na yon, Hoping that makita ng mayaman at of course pagamot or bigyan ng pagkain si Lazarus. But all the time when they were alive, walang ginawa yung um, a rich man to alleviate the suffering of Lazarus. So, dumating yung time, namatay silang dalawa, di ba? So, the rich man went to, well, hell. And of course, uh, um, Lazarus was taken to Abraham's bosom. Di ba? Meron doon ano, tanong. So, question is, yung rich man pumunta sa place, uh, sa place of suffering. So, yun ang ano eh. Um, description ng hell is a place of scarcity and suffering. Sabi niya, Father Abraham, pwede ba utusan mo si Lazarus na bigyan ako ng tubig? Eh, marami doon ang ano. Ang tinitignan natin is, ang tanong na, pumunta ba yung rich man dahil makasala, uh, makasalanan siya because he's a sinner? Uh, or pumunta siya doon dahil mayaman siya? Pumunta ba siya sa hell because he's rich? Or what? So the parable explains that the rich man did not was not in hell because makasalanan siya. But meron siyang dapat ginawa na di niya ginawa kay Lazarus. So that is sin of omission. Those are the things. Uh, sabi dyan is performing an obligatory act. Failure to perform an obligatory act. So it's expected na pag uh, nakikita mo isang tao, naghihirap gutom, eh, yung kagaya nga ni Lazarus may sakit na, wala pa siyang pagkain ikaw sobra-sobra yung pagkain mo at meron kang kakayahang tumulong sa kapwa mo na may pangangailangan tapos wala kang ginagawa yun ang sin of indifference kasi eh, yung sin of omission wala kang pakialam kahit pwede ka namang, meron ka namang pwedeng gawin sa sin of commission naman these are the performance of a forbidden act and the perfect example of that is, of course, the story where this woman was caught in adultery. The certain woman was caught in adultery in John chapter 8, 1 through 11. Diba? I'm focusing doon. Doon sa kasalanan niya, of course, maraming there are underlying issues naman doon sa story na yun. Pero, kasi sa commandment daw siya not commit adultery. And this one was, this woman was charged with adultery. So, yun yung dapat kasi hindi niya ginawa, na ginawa niya. Kaya yan, sin of commission. This um, forbidden act that is being uh, ginagawa ng tao. Parang yun nga kay Eve, diba? Huwag 
kakainin, bakit kinuha mo at kinain mo. Okay? So, I hope we have now a better understanding of sin. So, kasalanan, kung meron kang dapat ginawa na hindi mo ginawa, kasalanan din yun. Uh, if you allow somebody to just, yun nga sa bullying, kung nakikita mo yung isang tao binubuli, wala kang ginagawa, it might fall under sin of omission. Okay? Um, at yung ginawa mo yung bawal na dapat hindi mo ginagawa, that is commission. Okay. So, if I am tempted and I commit a sin, Okay, anong mangyayari sa akin? Anong pwede kong gawin? Okay, again, the Bible provides kung papaano. Okay, how to receive, resolve sin. And of course, you will come across this word repentance. Diba? So after committing the, um, the act, the sin of commission or omission, comes the, that process, we process ourselves. So meron tayong ginawa. Diba? Doon yung realization. So may guilty tayo naihiya tayo, natatakot tayo. And so what comes next? We pass the blame. We pass the blame. But after passing the blame, there's again that realization na alam natin na talagang kasalanan natin. And of course comes this word repentance. So what is repentance? It's actually a Greek concept. And it's metanoia or metanoion. Uh, Iba-iba yung spelling pag nag-research ka. But actually the correct pronunciation is metanoia. Um, and what is this concept of metanoia? So this uh, metanoia means to face a new direction or to have an about face, diba? Uh, remember yung na, yung scene doon sa Hebrew thought is lost in the right direction. So repentance, it is also uh, if you are lost, then yun nga babalik ka dapat sa uh, the right direction or the new direction. So that is the meaning. It's an about face. And mostly it is a change in one's thinking. That is the Greek understanding of metanoia or metanoion. It is actually a change in one's thinking, in one's perspective. Kasi nga, kung babalikan natin yung chapter 3, sabi ko, temptation begins in the mind. So repentance should also begin in the mind. So yun yung Greek concept ng metanoion. So it is a change in one's thinking. Um, in Greek thought, it is not about regret or guilt or shame. It is It implies making a decision to turn around to face new direction. Kaya it begins doon, again, doon sa utak. And we have a Hebrew thought, shuba or suba, silent T, uh, which literally means to turn, to turn, to turn what? To turn away from evil, to return to the good, to return to God. So that is repentance. So we did not only learn what is temptation, what is sin, using chapter 3 as a background. Bakit nagkaroon, uh, paano, nagkaroon ng kasalanan. So because of sin, ayan, the, the image of God is distorted. So this man now has to realize yung kanyang mistake and has to decide to go back to the right direction. Pero anong nangyari? Eh, ito ang pinakamasaklap. Um, okay, uh, very quick. Kasi uh, medyo sobra na tayo yata ng one hour. So, the fall of humanity in uh, Genesis chapter 3 talks about sin and rebellion that it's permitted the universe. Ano ang manifestation ng kasalanan? Ayan, merong dalawa. That is manifested in pride. And of course, moral corruption. It's a broken relationship with the divine as well as broken human relationship. Uh, hatred, anger, war, famine, human-made and natural disaster, pumasok na yan lahat-lahat. Wala na yung paradise. Diba? So, a broken humanity now in a broken world. Kaya the fallen humanity, and I will add, also a fallen world. Diba? Okay. Now, so this is the, when you read, continue to read Genesis chapter 4. So, Nung nangyari yun sa the first man and the first woman, sunod-sunod na yung evil in the world. So, chapter 4 records the first murder and it happens between two brothers um, last year or the other year. Akala ko na experience ko lahat ang, ang lahat sa ministry ko. I mean, all those hard realities that I observe and realize in my ministry. 
But one of the most ano, pinakamasakit is yung yan. I had uh, um, the experience of burying a person that is murdered by his own brother. I don't have words. I don't have language to really describe. Hindi ko na matandaan kung anong sinabi ko doon sa sermon. And that was really very painful. And now this is, kaya nga, binanggit ko doon sa sermon yung story of Cain and Abel. So Cain is the older brother. And of course, Abel is the younger brother. And what was the issue? Bakit pinatay ni Cain si Abel? Uh, okay, si Cain is a farmer. Kaya tingnan nyo dyan, hawak-hawak niya is yung mga uh, tinanim niya. And Abel was a shepherd. So here's a story of a farmer and a shepherd. So part of their um, tradition, di ba? part of their uh, cultural practices during that time is when you harvest your first fruits, and pag uh, meron yung first, okay, so doon sa animal, di ba? Firstborn animal, you have to dedicate that to God. Okay? So, how? Yan nga, pinapakita dyan, through burning. So, although hindi mo yan mababasa sa chapter 4 talaga, yung itong sinasabi ko, but it, when you read uh, the whole of the New Testament, uh, Old Testament, they will find that uh, they have this practice of, you know, kasi merong tinatawag noon na um, burnt offerings. Yung burnt offerings, kasama yon sa sin offering. So, uh, of course, ito na. Because this is after the fall, so makasalanan talaga ang tao. So, when you realize that meron kang ginawang mali, you have to do a sin offering by burning the, the offering that you are bringing to God. So, yung tinatawag lang burnt offering as demonstrated or as um, seen in this, uh, as we see in this picture, sorry, um, to the brothers came. Pero, what is the symbol that God is pleased with your offering and that you are forgiven of your sins? Kasi hindi mo na naman kakausap na diretsyo si God. So, um, ang explanation dyan is when um, the firstborn Cain offered his first, uh, first fruits, hindi nagdiretsyo yung usok sa taas. So, na-interpret niya na it's, God is not pleased with him. So, but when the younger brother Abel offered yung kanyang first uh, born animal, dire-diretso yung uso. So, parang yun. So, jealousy, inmulganti apal, and you will find this in the narrative. Uh, okay, signa natin yung susunod na picture. So, ayan, uh, tapos na yung murder. So, in-invite niya, paano niya pinatay? In-invite niya, let's go to the field. You know, nasa, ano, ayun niya, in-execute ni Cain yung murder ng kanyang younger brother. And of course, namatay si uh, younger brother. Now, this is now the conversation after the um, the killing, the murder. So, God said, Ken, where is your brother, where is Abel your brother? Sabi ni Cain, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? Sabi pa niya. Galit pa siya, italaga namang totoo. Eh, pinatay niya. So, God, and now you are cursed from the ground. When you till the ground, it shall no longer yield its strength. You shall be a fugitive and a wanderer on earth. So, dito lang. So, yung kay, uh, the first man kanina, kay Adam, hindi naman siya yung diretsyong na curse, it's the ground. Uh, here again, na ulit yun, and now you are cursed from the ground. You are cursed from the ground. Kasi nga daw yung dugo ng kapatid niya, dumanak dun sa lupa. And so, sabi ni God, the, the blood of your brother cries out from the ground. Kaya yun. And of course, uh, you will not be settled throughout your life. You will be a fugitive in a wanderer on earth. Pinigyan pa siya ng mark para uh, walang papatay kay Cain. Pero talagang pagdosahan niya yung kanyang kasalanan. So, that's the first murder. And in Genesis chapter 6, you will find this... Um, Verses 11 to 12, 7. Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight, and the earth was filled with violence. And God saw the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted their way upon the earth. So wala, puro yan. Kung basahin mo yung chapter, one, uh, chapter 3 up to chapter 11, it talks about how man is became wicked talaga. Naging masama talaga yung tao. So ayan na, ginawa ni God. Banished yung... Uh, masasamang tao. So, ayan, uh, the story of Noah. And we don't have much time to discuss about this. But, uh, ayun nga, because humanity turned to be wicked. 
and God must do something about this. So, nagkaroon ng flood for 40 days and 40 nights. And of course, Noah was the only man that's righteous. And so, Noah, uh, God talked to Noah, to Noah to build an ark so that there would be place for the animals before God would send the flood. Okay? Yun ang nangyari. So, Noah was telling the people that uh, you come because the, the, here, the, there would be flood. Hindi naniwala yung mga tao, tinawanan pa si Noah, di ba? But totoo, ayan, when the, the ark was done and it was closed, of course, pumasok doon yung, anim, yung mga animals in the family, of course, of Noah, the wife, the sons, and the girlfriends of the sons, uh, and doon lahat, and then it was closed, and yan nag-start na uh, umulan, so for 40 days and 40 nights. Ayan, so yan yung mga hindi naniwala. But after that, short ka tayo yung story, Okay, so God again processed what happened to humanity. And so, yan yung, uh, the rainbow is now a symbol of, so sabi niya, uh, ito yung um, exact words. God's covenant to know, okay, I will never again curse the ground because of humankind. For the inclination of the human heart is evil from youth. Nor will ever again destroy every living creature as I have done. As long as the earth endures seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. Shall not cease. So, um, ayan. Kung bakit patuloy ang buhay natin, di ba? Kahit anong nangyayari sa world, kahit may COVID-19, we're still looking uh, forward to better days. Because one of our, ayan nga, that's the basis. So, pag nakakita tayo ng rainbow, it's a symbol of hope. Diba? Pero nung mga bata kami, sabi nila, do not point to the rainbow because your hand would uh, become like this. Uh, pala, kasi the rainbow, of course, you have a scientific explanation for that. But, of course, according to the myth in Genesis, that is the symbol of God's promise to Noah that he will not destroy the earth again. So, life must continue. So, yung sinasabi ng iba, ah, siguro itong si Typhoon Rolly ay, uh, ano ni God, punishment ni God. You have to reflect deeper on that. So, kung bakit may mga ganyan, sabi natin, because the earth is no longer paradise. So, kasama yan dun sa nangyari sa tao. Uh, curses the ground because of you, or because of yung ginawa mo. So, ganyan na yung nangyari. So, kagagawan ng tao. So, when we reflect about disasters and all this, uh, maghunos dili tayo na i-blame ka agad-agad si God o yun ang kagustuhan ni God. That is incorrect theology. You have to go back and read these um, narratives for you to have a better understanding of what's going on around us. Okay, so last one minute. And then the end of the first part of Genesis is chapter 11. So, what's chapter 11? It talks about a tower. This time, we have lots of grandiose towers. Ayan yung mga tsura. May mga communication towers. Of course, you have the Eiffel Tower and you have the Leaning Tower of Pizza. And of course, these are the modern uh, day uh, towers. Communication or anumang tower yan. But in the Bible, we have, of course, the Tower of Babel. That's very uh, famous. Why? Uh, Sabi ng iba, this is a monument of pride. Kasi sabi ng mga tao, anong sabi nila? Um, okay, come let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the heavens and let us make a name for ourselves. Let us make a name for ourselves. Kaya sabi ng mga scholars, the Tower of Babel actually is a monument of human pride, of human engineering. So, ayun nga. Manif dalawang manifestation ng kasalanan or nung what happened sa chapter 3. Uh, dalawa, sabi natin, is pride and of course, corruption. Corruption, moral corruption in many forms. Uh, manifested in many forms. Hatred, greed, yan lahat-lahat na. Okay? So, ayan yung Tower of Babel. And, you know, uh, chapter 11 explains why it is called Tower of Babel because God confused the language. So, there's bubbling. Um, because when they were doing the tower, of course, alam ni God ano yung purpose nila. Yun nga, let us make a name for ourselves. So, God came down and destroyed the, uh, the tower and confused their language. Of course, uh, ang explanation dyan is 
um, this particular narrative would explain to us why on earth uh, people have different languages, have different colors, have different races. So the Tower of Babel is an explanation of that. Why do we have different uh, languages? Uh, why people have different languages? Um, ayan yung explanation sa Tower of Babel. But most importantly, it was not successful because it is constructed out of human pride. Yeah, let us make a name for ourselves. Um, okay, and so Sirana. And of course, later, it's tuloy-tuloy pa rin ang uh, ginagawa ng mga tao. So, an attempt to, so, the Tower of Babel is an attempt to explain the existence of diverse human languages. According to Genesis, the Babylonians wanted to make a name for themselves by building a mighty city and a tower with its top into the heavens. God disrupted the work uh, by so confusing the language of the workers that they could no longer understand one another. The city was never completed and the people were dispersed over the face of the earth. You will find that actually doon sa Britannica.com uh, Ang sumunod dyan, yan. Ang reflections natin, evil desires, acts, and motives still reside in the human heart after all the warning from God. Okay? So, yan. War. Meron pa rin mga patayan, of course. You remember Hitler when we speak of, you know, <laughs> the most heinous crime committed by people in history. Ayan, kayo title ng book. Uh, I, will ha I have a copy of this book, The World's Most Evil People. And of course, one of these uh, men is Hitler or was Hitler. So ano pa, ayan, meron na tayong famine, hunger, and malnutrition. 200 million children around the world suffer the effects of malnutrition. Mga matagal na yan, so mas marami pang million yan. Ayan, that's the face of hunger kung hindi natin alam. Nakaka-consensya because tayo mga Pinoy, Pinay, kumakain tayo five times a day. Sometimes meron pang midnight snack. Ay, samantalang ayan, that's the face of hunger. So, destruction of the world is not about humans, ay, it's not about flora and fauna, but it includes us. Okay, so... Every 3.0 seconds, a child dies because of hunger. Okay. Last uh, one. So what went wrong? Because of greed. What is greed? We'll discuss that doon sa Ten Commandments. So thank you. And I hope that we learned something. Uh, please um, um, place your comments doon sa comment section below. And I'll try to... Um, answer them, go back to them, and try to uh, reflect with you. Kahit hindi naman questions, reflections. Kung mayroon pa kayo mga reflections. And it would be nice to share so that others will also read and um, be, uh, at least, you would learn something from it. So, thank you.